When it comes to doing IP addressing in Netbox, there's the right way and then there's the functional way. In this video, we're gonna talk about the right way. Now, I'm not gonna just leave you with that cliffhanger because the next video, I'm gonna talk about the functional way, which I used to call the engineer's way. I just didn't wanna offend people. That might be a little more planned, but most engineers that I find are not planners. They wouldn't say that, but they they just, they, they kind of, they get the boxes and they're like, oh, I'm, okay, I'm just gonna take it and go install it and then and then figure out what to do from there, right? And, and it's valid, it's functional, you'll get there. It's just kind of more of a roundabout way. In this way, I want to talk about if you've got a project manager or you're thinking ahead, you're thinking proactively of how you're going to do things. Let me, let me first off go back. Hang on, let me bring you to the screen. I've got Netbox right here. I'm going to take you back to how Netbox handles IP addressing because we've already done this right here, which is the aggregate, the routing information registries, uh, kind of the, the big umbrella of subnets, right? Now we're into the prefixes, which is where it really begins. Now, just, just for the record, the engineer way or the functional way is to do this right? You got your devices. You're like, I'm going to install them. And I, you know, you go install them and you're, you're assigning IP addresses. And later on, you're like, oh, I guess I'll, I guess I'll go, you know, project, well, not project plan, but, but plan, you know, how the prefixes work and all that. It's kind of like, it's, it's more of like the, I guess method versus the, 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 the planned way, which is let me plan this out, figure out what IP addresses are there and then assign them to the devices. We're going to kind of go uh, each direction in here. So, uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page, let me just get to a, a blank slide right here. When you're doing IP addressing, typically you'll do allocation. So let's just say, for example, we've got a data center. I'm going to get, get, uh, get a good example going here, a data center, um, where we've said, let's just say 10.16.0.0 slash 16 is going to be our uh, data center subnet, right? Um, and that'll be for all the device. I mean, and you, you and I both know as, as you look at it, it's huge. It's the 65,536 IP addresses. So there's no way you would just, you know, flat lay that on the data center. You're going to subnet that. So maybe you break that into all the different subnets. Maybe you do, you say, uh, you know, 10.16.0.0 slash 21. Uh, that would be an increment of eight is, is uh, let's just say uh, database servers, right? The 10.16.0. 8.0 slash 21, or not 24, 21, uh, might be our web servers. And, and down, down, down we go. And, and again, this is still a huge subnet. This, this would literally encompass 10.16.0.0 through 7.255 would be the last IP address in that range. So we'll subnet that further. Maybe we'll have 10.16.0.0 slash 24 is our web database servers. Uh, you know, the, the 10.16, you see where I'm going here, right? This is, this is the way that you plan it. Um, usually the engineer's mind is you'll just have one subnet at the data center, one, you know, slash 24. And when that fills up, you'll go to the next one and you'll go to the next one. And then before long, you've got projects on your hands where you're trying to undo all of the, the you know, disarray of, of devices that are in these different subnets. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm confessing, I'm an engineer. I'm not a planner by nature. I've just, through pain and sorrow, learned to, to think in a planning mindset, right? So, so, uh, so that being said, let's just say, you know, let me just, I'm going to screenshot this just so we've got it. Um, this will be how we set up our net box, right? There we go. Okay. Now we're getting that box back in the, in the scene here. We've got the aggregates, which again are the big umbrellas. Instead, we're going down now to the level of prefixes. Now watch this. I'm going to click on add. We're going to say 10 dot. So, so let's start from the data center, right? 10.16.0.0 forward slash 16. Uh, description data center subnet, right? This is for the whole data center. Obviously, we'd be more descriptive. It's just a nice generic name. Um, now notice we've got this is a pool section underneath. This is if, if you, you know, typically when you're working with subnets, the very first and the last IP address are not assignable, right? Because one represents the network, one represents the broadcast. But in some situations, like for instance, you've got an assigned subnet and you're doing NAT, things like that, you can use the first and last uh, IP address because you're using it differently. So if you are doing that, then check the box is a pool and then everything will be considered usable. It won't remove the first and last uh, from the list. Now notice you also have four statuses. I guess that'd be status I, right? Statuses, uh, container, active, reserved, and deprecated. So container means this isn't, get, you're going to have direct assignments out of this. You're gonna, this is just a container of other prefixes, right? Active is 
active, which was therefore reserved is like, okay, I'm planning that for the future. Deprecated is like I used it and now it's, it's, it's no longer in use, but maybe there's some maintenance or something I need to do on that to get it completely removed from the system. Right? So each of those will have different behaviors. And I'll show that to you in just a second. You can see there's other things here, the site, and that would be your data center, what VLAN. We'll talk about VLANs in a little bit. So I'm going to hit create, right? We've got our first prefix. Check it out. 10.16.0.0 forward slash 16. It's a container of my first site. Okay. Now going back to that, um, that hang on, I, I need my screen cap. Where are you? Right there. Um, so going back to our design, that was the data center right there. And then we broke that into the database servers, 10.16.0.0 forward slash 21. And then 10.16.8.0 is the web server. So let's just, I just want to add two more, right? Uh, 10.16.0.0 forward slash 21 is our database servers. But again, this is not active. I'm not going to sign straight from that. It's still too big. I'm going to have subnets of those, right? I'll hit, uh, let's add that to our, our, let's say that's our data center, create and add another. We'll do uh, 10.16.8.0 forward slash 21 container, and this will be our web servers. You get the idea, right? Um, space, create. Now, Notice how NetBox is starting to handle this. Ooh, this is so good. Look at it. Notice, first off, as I move from collapsed to expanded, it's saying, okay, that's your data center. And underneath that, you've got two subnets. Now, notice the utilization is ticking up. Ah, because it's a container. When you allocate subnets, when you allocate prefixes, it's considered the, con the container will represent that as being utilized. What, hang on, hang on, watch this, watch this. I click on add. Let's now add our, I think I said 10.16.0.04 slash 24 was going to be our web databases, right? Um, and I'm going to say that's, that's now going to be an active one. I'm actually going to actively assign IP addresses from there, right? Uh, throw that at the data center, create and add another, and then we'll have 10.16.1.0 forward slash 24. That's going to be our user databases, right? Fine, click, cr click on create. Now look at what's going to happen. I'm going to click on back to the prefixes, right? Expand that out. Now, whoa, what did I do? Oh, okay, sorry. I was, I was like, oh no, I've, what, what, what did I split up there? So, so notice from this first subnet, I'm now a quarter use. That's because this allows eight individual slash 24s that would come out of there. I've used two of eight, right? That's, so that's 25%, one fourth uh, that's been used up right there. Now, now watch, watch this, watch this. I'm going to go in here and let's say I change this to, instead of being a container, it's actually active. I click on update, go back to the prefixes. Oh, look at that. It's no longer showing any utilization because now the mindset of NetBox is saying, okay, I'm assuming that it's utilized when it's assigned as in an IP address, right? You've actually created an IP address from that subnet. Whereas a container is, it's considered, you know, used when you've actually allocated the subnet. So I'll go back here and hit, uh, let's, let's go to uh, edit and change that back to a container. Now it's considered allocated when you allocate other prefixes from that. Notice back, back to this. So, so the active will show used when you start adding IP addresses. Container shows used when you start adding prefixes. Hmm, makes sense. Okay, so let's get into the IP addresses now. Super easy, but super valuable to know how you do this. So I'm going to go click on add and there's two first off fields that you have right here. Let's, let's go the, the old school way. Again, this is the planning way. The planning way says before I ever have a server, I'm going to document that server and what it will be and then configure it based on this. And can I tell you, this is the idea of, of NetBox. NetBox was never meant to just be a documentation system. I mean, it, it does that, it does it well, but it's full API centric, meaning application programming interfaces. You have the ability to have this set up add an IP address and it automatically adds it to your monitoring system. It automatically adds it to uh, your, your inventory database, right? Your billing system. Uh, it automatically adds it to your configuration server. So when you plug the device in and it downloads, I mean, this is the idea of software defined networking. This is the idea of making things where, I mean, that's what network to code, for example, that's their whole company. That's all they do is, is they take a product like NetBox and then tie it all together to make everything just link, 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 link to where it all flows from one database instead of having you create it here, add it to the Excel spreadsheet, go manually configure. That's, that's going to be the old school way back in the day. We used to do that when my grandfather configured routers, right? And so, so IP address is here. So I'm, I'm documenting this, but just know this could be so much bigger. So we'll say this is 10.16.1. Actually, 0.10 uh, slash 24. And let's just say this is our, you know, uh, web... Uh, image 
db primary, right? Um, notice you've got, you know, DNS names, virtual, you know, what role is this if you have specific roles defined for this? Um, and you can, you can do NAT, you can do all kinds of things with this, but primarily I'm just wanting to get that IP address in the database and whoa, look at that. We have the IP address, it's laying out the parents right there in this nice little hierarchy. This is the active one, and then it's part of this container, which is part of this data center, right? It's laying it out for us. You can also go in there, just like you saw, and bulk create them, really easy. Not, not even gonna, well, I'll, I'll show it to you. So we, we can do a 10.16.1, let's just do 11, hang on, bracket, 11 through 19. You'll be able to, to see the, um, the, the range syntax on there, really easy to, to get, right? Um, and I'm gonna click on create, hangs a second, and then bam, we've got it. There's the one I manually created. There's the, the nine or so that I bulk created. And as I come back here to my prefixes, now when I expand this out, I can start seeing these becoming utilizing. The active ones utilization comes from the IP addresses that are in there. One more thing, I know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like barely breathing in this video because there's so much I wanna show you. And one more thing I wanna show you is how you can bulk create these guys. Because most of you, if you're in an existing environment, will, ha will have been tracking IP addresses from some previous database, usually an Excel spreadsheet. That's the most common thing, right? So on everything, prefixes, devices, everything, they always have this import field. And they did such a good job in, in thinking of this. Um, so when you click import, you kind of create your CSV on the fly. That's what, I, what I'm, I'm saying of it. So, so, you, so they're saying right here are the valid fields. There's only two that are required for IP addresses, IP or address and status. So, so I would go in there and set up my CSV file. So this is Microsoft Excel, right? Putting all my IPs, my statuses, maybe I put the description in there, you know, and, and some of the other fields if I want to, to modify your CSV format, all you gotta do is, you know, a comma, and we'll also add in the description, right? Put that in there. So now you would go into Excel, export it, and literally copy and paste this into this text box. It doesn't have an upload CSV function, nothing like that, because it causes a lot of pain and sorrow. Just go to the CSV, copy, control C, come in here and do a control V. Let's just do, you know, I'll just do a manual example, right? 10.16.1. Let's just say 25, forward slash 24. Uh, status will be active. Description will be Jeremy's uh, server, right? Submit, and just like that, it's like import completed. If that were a CSV file with a thousand IP addresses, it would kind of hang there while doing database writes, and then bam, they would all show up right there in this import completed, and now it's part of your IP addressing uh, for that site. There's Jeremy's server adding its way to the list. So three different ways that you can add IP addresses, manually, one by one, bulk create with the range and add them in in a big chunk and then manually go update each one, um, and then CSV imports. All of those is the right way to, to add IP addresses, going from the prefix hierarchy down to the IP addresses, and then, and then from there, provisioning your devices based on your plan. It's that simple.